In this unit, we're going to be working with perimeter, area, volume, and temperature. In this lesson, we're going to look at area and surface area. Okay, hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to look at area and surface area, okay, which are related but, but slightly different ideas here. So area is the amount of space there is on a flat surface. And this is a two-dimensional measure here. So in this case here, the question that you might answer here is, um, for example, how much sod to cover a lawn? That would be like a surface area, sorry, an area problem. Okay, an area problem. How much sod to cover a lawn here? However, surface area is a little bit different because it combines the areas of all the surfaces on a three-dimensional shape. So in, in other words, a question uh, that might be appropriate here is how much wrapping paper to wrap a present because I have to wrap it all all around the the three-dimensional shape whereas in that first case right here I'm really just worried about one two-dimensional area and how much how much space that takes up <coughs> now the way we normally talk about uh, area is to talk about square or to use square units here so inches squared centimeters squared and so and what we mean by that is you might have a, a length here and a length here Okay, so for some three-dimensional, sorry, for some um, rectangle here. And I'm looking at how many, let's say, little centimeters I can go along this way, how many centimeters I can go along this way. And when I talk about square centimeters, basically what I'm saying is this. I'm going to take that object, I'm going to chop it up. And each one of these little things right here is a centimeter by a centimeter. So I'm creating a, a, a square, one four sides, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter. Okay, so this is one square centimeter. Another one here, this is together, that's two square centimeters. So how many of these square centimeters can I use to cover that shape? Or maybe the length of each side here is an inch, in which case it's square inches. But that's what we're doing, okay? I know how long a centimeter is. I have a mental image of how long a centimeter is. So in my mind, I can figure out what a square centimeter would look like, a square on both sides, and then I use that to cover up uh, a larger area. Anyway, let's take a quick look at some uh, some problems that you might see. Okay, let's take a look at some problems here. You probably want to pull out your calculator while we're doing this. So calculate the area of the following, and we're going to round to the nearest hundredth where necessary here. Okay, so first of all, we're going to take a quick look at like a rectangular area here and you're probably familiar with this the area of a rectangle is going to be length times width okay so it's basically the number of centimeters this way the number of centimeters this way and if I was to draw the lines like I did before that would give me the number of square centimeters that I would use to cover this so this will be eight centimeters multiplied by 3.5 centimeters, and I put parentheses around there to show my substitution. And I pull up my calculator, 8 times 3.5, 28. 28 square centimeters would cover that particular uh, rectangle right there. For a circle, okay, and this is probably going to go, you're going to have to think back a little bit. The area formula for a circle is pi multiplied by that radius squared. And if you think back to some previous lessons, you'll remember that you know we, we talked specifically about what happens when you're squaring something when you do substitution there. So it's important to make sure that, that's, that you've got that uh, clear in your head how to do this. We're going to put parentheses there, 1.2 meters squared. And again, I can do that really quickly here because I can tell right now that the assumption that I'm supposed to make is that that is a radius. And now I'm going to go to my calculator. And that'll be pi, I want to use the pi button on my calculator, multiplied by 1.2 squared. And to the nearest hundredth, that's going to be 4.52 square meters. Okay? It's a little bit harder to do that on a, a circle to see how that would work here. But yeah, I could take 4.52 square meters and use that to cover up that particular area. With a triangle... The area is one half the base times the height. 
So here's the base of my triangle, and the height is the kind of the perpendicular distance from the bottom straight up to that third vertex there. Now in this case, we're, we're giving you the dimensions that you need here. So this is going to be 1 half, 9 inches, multiplied by 11 inches. So 1 half is 0.5 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 11. And we get 49.5 square inches. Can be used to cover up that shape. Take a look at some more. And let's take a look at some more complicated shapes. So here's what we call these composite shapes here, where they're, they're slightly more complicated shapes made up of simpler shapes. So the trick is to try to cut these things up in a, in a way that makes it easy for me to calculate their total area. So for example, for this one right here, what, what I might do is just in my head, put a line straight across there. And that breaks it up into two rectangles. And I've got the length and the width of each one. Okay, so my total area here is going to be the length of one rectangle multiplied by the width of the first one plus the length of the second one multiplied by the width of the second one. So in this case, that might be 26 centimeters multiplied by 14 centimeters plus 28 centimeters multiplied by 15 centimeters. And that I can do whoops, immediately on my calculator, 26 times 14 plus 28 multiplied by 15. 784 square centimeters. Now that's not the only way that I could have broken that up. Okay, I could have dropped that line down there, for example. But then I would have had to figure out what the like the length of that square is and then what the overall length of that other rectangle is because it's not immediately given to me. But I could figure that out. It wouldn't take me too long to do that. Okay, here I have got a rectangle and then I've got half of a circle. And I have to assume that that's half of a circle here. Now, so my area here is going to be the length times width of that rectangle and I'm going to add to it well, okay, pi r squared is a full circle, if I was to put the full circle here, but that area right there has already been kind of taken up by the by the rectangle. I, I don't need to calculate that area of the circle here, so I don't need that bottom part of the circle, I just need the top, which means I only need half of that circle right there. Well, in this case here, my length is going to be 18 feet. For that rectangle, the width will be 16 feet plus 1 half pi. Okay, so what is the radius of that semicircle there? Okay, well, this is 16, and I know that because of the way rectangles work here, and I have to assume that this is a rectangle, okay, that that side right there is going to be the same as this side. So that's going to be 16 feet across. Now, I need the radius, and that's going to be from side to from sorry, end to the end of the circle is going to be the diameter. So I need half of that. So I just got to think for a second. What's half of sixteen? And the answer is going to be eight. So I'll make this eight feet squared. Now, I can go to my calculator, and I can again I can do this all in in one step here. So it'll be eighteen times 15 plus 1 half multiplied by pi multiplied by 8 squared. And I can put that 8 in parentheses like I've done right here, but I don't really need to. The calculator will, will know what I mean. When I press enter, I will get approximately, to the nearest hundredth, 388.53 feet squared. Good. Whoops. Let's do a few more. Okay. Well, we're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to now look at three-dimensional shapes. Okay. So now we're going to talk about surface area. So now for this one right here, surface area. Okay. With a rectangular prism, 
there is a little bit of a shortcut I can take here, but I'm going to let you know right now. Surface area is usually kind of a long calculation because it, it can be somewhat tedious to get all of the different sides here. But in this case, I've got okay, uh, two sides that will be the same. The front and the back will be the same. The left side and the right side will be the same. So let's identify our, our different pieces here. Okay, let's say that this is going to be the length, this would be the width, and right here, 33 would be the height. So this shape right here is going to be 15 by 13. It's going to be length times width, but I'm going to have two of those, top and bottom. So two times length times width. I am going to have this side up front here, this rectangle that I can see completely here, that's kind of straight on to me, is going to be the, uh, is going to be the length multiplied by the height, and there's going to be two of those, okay, the front and the back. And then I've got this side right here that's going to be the width by the height, and there's going to be two of those, the left side and the right side. Whoops. So two times uh, width times height. So this will be two times 15 times 13 plus two times 15 times 33 plus 2 times, and I'm running over to my edge here, 13 by 33. Running into the next question. We pull out the calculator here, and away we go. 2 times 15 times 13, plus 2 times 15 times 33, plus 2 times 13 times 33. And we get 2,238 meters squared. Now over here, for this cylindrical shape, okay, oh, it's a little bit different here. So the surface area of a, of a cylinder is going to be, first of all, pi r squared, because I've got a circle on the top here. But I've got a circle underneath here, and it's going to be exactly the same circle here. So there's going to be two of those circles. Okay, now I got to think about this a little bit. How do I get what we call the lateral area? Like if you were to think of this as a can, like let's say a, a can of, of pop, and you were to grab that can, what's the surface area of the side that you're grabbing? Well, the way we figure this out here is, well, what if I was to cut straight down along the, the side of that can? and unfold it. Well, then what I would get here is this big rectangle. Now, in this particular case here, the height of that rectangle would be 15.1 inches. The question is, what would the length be? Well, when it's, when it's in the shape of the can, that length is the distance all the way around the circle or the circumference of the circle. So this length right here, I don't know what it is right off the bat, but I know that I'm going to create a circle out of it, and it's going to have a radius of 16.4. So that means that this is going to be the circumference. This will be 2 times pi, and this will be times the radius, which is 16.4 inches. Whoops. So here, what's going to happen here is I'm going to have the, the area, the surface area here is going to be 2 pi r and then multiplied by the height, the length times the height or the length times the width, if you will. So now here we go. 2 times pi times 16.4. That, that takes into account the two circular bases plus 2 times pi times 16.4 times 15.1. Okay, pull out the calculator. 2 Pi, whoops, sorry, 2 pi, 16.4 squared, plus 2 pi, 16.4, 15.1. Okay, and to the nearest tenth in this case, it's 3,245.9 inches squared. Okay, and there we go. Now we're going to take a look at just two more problems here where things are described. And so we have to kind of think about it a little bit here. Kendra's sandbox for her little sister will be six feet long and four feet wide. What area of her yard will it cover? And again, just like we had commented before, 
these diagrams really help here. So six feet long, four feet wide. Okay, now I know what they're talking about. We're talking about this right here. So my area is going to be length times width. So six feet times four feet. Okay, and it's easier to write it like this. 24 feet squared here. So basically, I think about what that looks like. I know what a foot by a foot looks like. It'll take 24 of these to cover up that sandbox. And then finally here, Jeremy is painting his room, which is 20 feet by 14 feet and uh, 8 feet from floor to ceiling. He has one window that is 2.5 feet by 4.5 feet. If he needs two coats of paint, what will the total area he uh, paints? Ooh, okay, this is an interesting problem here. So we've got a room, which is 20 feet by 14 feet. So that's basically that is our, uh, that's our floor. Okay, so 20 feet. 14 feet, whoops, Oops, went a little too far down there. And then we're going to go up. We're going to go up eight feet. Now the surface area, okay, the surface area is going to be the area of all those, those uh, walls there. Now, and then bear in mind here, it's just the walls. So this is our length, 20, this is our width, 14, and this is our height here. So our surface area is going to be, now first of all, it's going to be, uh, for this front wall right here, that is going to be length times height. And there's going to be two of those, front and back. There is going to be a width times a height. Okay. Okay. And there's going to be two of those. That's the left side and the right side. Now, notice that we're not going to do length times width because he's not painting the floor. He's not painting the ceiling. Okay, We're just going from floor to ceiling. So it's just those walls there. But we're going to subtract that window that he's got right there, which is going to be 2.5 feet by 4.5 feet. So this little window doesn't get any paint on it at all. So we're going to subtract that little uh, length of the window by the width of the window to get just the area that he's going to paint. So the front wall, back wall, left wall, right wall, minus the window. And then we're going to put parentheses around that whole thing and we're going to put a two out front because he's going to put two coats of paint on. So this is going to be two multiplied by two multiplied by 20 by, oops, by eight height, plus 2 multiplied by 14 by 8, height, minus uh, the length, which is 4.5, multiplied by 2.5. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. But the calculator will remember it. All the calculator will do it for us here. So 2 times 2, whoops, whoops, 20, uh, 8, plus 2, 14, whoops, 8, minus 4.5, 2.5. And all together, we're going to get 1,065.5 square feet to cover that wall twice without painting over the window. Okay? So those kind of questions can get a little bit more complicated. Um... But you want to break it down. Just break it down piece by piece. Don't try to do too much in one one step here. Okay. I mean, okay, granted, <laughs> I say that, and yet I've kind of done that all and I entered into my calculator in one step here. But what I did is I looked at I looked at a wall, doubled it because there was two of them. Looked at a wall, doubled it was because there was two of them. I think that gets all those walls. Okay, good. Then I'm gonna take away the window. Make sure I've got that in here. Oh, yeah, then we need to have two coats, and it's going to be the whole thing. So I'm, I'm basically just building my equation here a little, little bit at a time uh, and then doing the substitution to evaluate it.